Hello and welcome to CJC Adventures. Cole here and today I'm back in Tipton and I'm going to take a look at a nostalgic journey into the past and the present of this famous black country town here in the West Midlands in jolly old England. I'm going to take a look at Tipton's smallest housing estate, Little Burton, along with industry. And of course, Tipton produced a lot of industry over the years. And part of why they call it the Black Country is why Tipton produced so much smoke and it produced so much decay in the air, shall we say. It would be difficult to look at all that industry, but we're going to do our best. Because, let's face it, there was so much industry, wasn't there, in Tipton, from factories, foundries, and goods that were shipped not only in Great Britain but all over the world. So let's go and see what we can see. And as we enter the estate itself, we enter in Alexander Road, which is one of the largest roads and thoroughfares in Tipton. And on the right hand side you can see the swimming bass which replaced the old one in Park Lane. Now Alexander Road wasn't actually originally called that, it was actually called Workhouse Lane because there actually used to be a workhouse nearby here and that was probably where it did get its name from because obviously workhouses back in the day were very popular weren't they, you know, so, but actually Alexander Road was named that round about the 1910s, 1920s. Now one of the main streets in Alexander Road was Thirstfield Road. Now this land you can see here has a housing development on it now. But before that there was all old houses and when they rebuilt after flattening them they still kept the name Thirstfield Road. Now the first pub we come to is Little Burton Inn. Now this actual pub, of course, was named after the estate itself. A very traditional pub with good values and good beer. And, well, good customers as well. And a lot of neighbours went in here. Not, I don't think many from further afield came here. But I might be wrong on that. But at least neighbours came to this pub but let's have a look at what it looks like today well today I'm glad to say pleased to announce that the building is still here it doesn't look much different but it hasn't been a pub for years it was actually closed down and stood here empty for over a decade probably a lot longer than that and then eventually it opened as a fish and chip shop and a barber's next door which is good that the building is still here and you can still see that it was a pub by the walls on the outside the original tiled walls so yeah at least it's still here and we now come to Spring Street 200 yards up from the former Little Burton pub and as you can see here it's a small street it's got character, it's got a little bit of industry, which we'll come to later, over the back. And you've got these traditional houses, which was later known as slums. And, yeah, I do know a few people what used to live here, but let's have a look at what it looks like today. Well, today, you can still see it's the same place. It's had the road done up a few times and those houses are long gone and there's new development on the left that was actually derelict land for many years after those houses were removed and you've got a bit of work on the side on the right and it still looks the same it hasn't changed all that much except for the buildings are long gone and this is spring street a very remembered place Now one thing that stood out, probably more than anything else in Tipton, especially at night, was the gasworks. Now the gasworks lit up literally 
everywhere for miles. You know, you didn't need street lamps. It was like its own version of Blackpool with the lights beaming everywhere. It's like a space station in a lot of ways. But let's have a look at what it looks like today. Well, today it's long gone, really has. You know, I do remember when this went. It was a place where a lot of people worked. And as you can see, these actual gates are the original gates and you can still see where it says Cadent, your gas network and other signs. Those are some of the original signs as well. And apparently there's still gas under the grounds over there, but that is actually called Stambridge Park. And it's a big housing estate with many houses, but it's good that these, these gates are actually still here. The actual drive is original as well. So, you know, it's good. It's good that it's something still survives anyway. We now come to the Cottage Spring, the second pub on the Burton Estate, otherwise known as the Monkey House, because, the, well, why it was called the Monkey House, a lot of people probably don't know these days, it's because the actual owner, or one of the owners, had a monkey in a cage in the window, so it stuck after that it was called the Monkey House. Now, it's had a lot of changes over the years, and it was also known as the Cot for short, and a lot of the local workers use this. I went in with my granddad and family, and it, it was a very gold mine pub, you know, it did a lot of trade. But let's have a look at what it looks like today. Well, sadly, the Cottage Spring, or the Cot, or the Monkey House, whichever name you want to put to it, has actually now gone. When a lot of the works closed around here, it did seem to struggle. It did try to survive for a while. Being on a main road, you would have thought it would have done better, but sadly this housing development is in place now, and to me it's not the same at all. You know, I like the Cottage Spring, I like the, well, I always called it the Cot, but sadly, it's long gone. Now heading up the Burton Estate, you can see that wall there, that stone wall. Now that is an original wall when Tipton was being modernised back in round about the early 1900s. And if you look at the tunnel or the bridge, they're actually replaced the crossings, which was a bit of a nightmare for traffic and so on. Now, one particular famous view is of part of the gasworks, which you can see over the top of the horizon on the Tipton skyline. And you can see the house and the houses to the left and the walls. But, you know, it, it looks like a, any traditional sort of picture of Tipton took in around about the 1970s by the looks of the cars. So let's have a look at what it looks like today. Well today it does look quite pretty much the same. Really doesn't look much different at all. It looks that house is still there and of course the gas works over the skyline has gone. But it looks like any other time in Tipton and it's nice that not much has changed which is good I think anyway. And we now come to Upper Church Lane and we come to the Triplex Foundry. Now the Triplex Foundry was a traditional industry making place. It had lots of people working there. It was local but over time it changed its name to Sigma Cast and it didn't last very long after that when it changed its name and there was a lot of complaints in the area about smoke years ago you wouldn't, you wouldn't probably have that because it was well known to have smoke especially in the black country and all around the midlands area but let's have a look at what it looks like today well today it's been replaced by housing there's no remnants at all really that the triplex was ever here it's long gone, these new houses have been put up in place of it and a lot of people was glad of that but another factory gone at least.
which is sad. Now right next to the Triplex Foundry stood the Albion Foundry. Now the Albion Foundry was roughly around about the same sort of size as the Triplex Foundry itself. It pretty much made most things that other foundries would make, such as you know, castings for all sorts really, you know, depending on what people wanted for the day. But this ground actually stood empty for many years. It was just a walkover. You could take a shortcut to Alexander Road. Nowadays it's been replaced by this social housing scheme and it looks, well, shall we say better, but at least the ground is being used for something. And we now come to Firth Cleveland Steel Strip. Now, Firth Cleveland Steel Strip to me holds a special place in my heart because my dad worked here along with my granddad and a few other family members as well and a lot of friends who I still see today still talk about the work itself and what it stood for and how great it was to work here. It was one of those places that produced brilliant steel, great workmanship, proper British workmanship and you couldn't fault it, you know, and uh, over time, of course, like any workplace, it starts to dwindle away, times change, and it's a sad fact, really, if you think of the times you had somewhere, and, you know, it's not just a job tier, is it, really? It's a part of your life. But let's have a look at what it looks like today. Sadly, Firth Cleveland steel strip has disappeared from the Tipton landscape. It was actually owned by Jack Hayward at one point, who owned Wolverhampton Wanderers many years ago, when steel was a big thing in the Black Country and all around this area. And as you can see, it's been replaced by Ducey, and it's also got a multi-stroke company on here which has been here since Firth Cleveland steel strip was here but it's a sad sight it's no longer here there's not really much remnants left I am pleased to say though that one remnant which is left is the red gates those were the actual gates that were here when the actual work was here and they're still here today which is is nice to see something has survived Now another foundry in the town near the train station in Tipton was Lee Howell and they used to make pumps. They were a foundry and they were very traditional. They had a lot of traditional ways of, of making what they made but they were very well known in the area and let's have a look at what it looks like today. It looks very different. They've got St Paul's School is there now. That actually was moved from Wood Street in Tipton to here and there's also an allotment over there as well and there's a lot of bad ground over there because of the actual foundry what was there Lee Howell but this is what it looks like today and no remnants, and it has changed quite a bit actually. And we have now come to Chatwin's Foundry. Now, Chatwin's Foundry was a very small place. It was near the canal, and it was just off Albion Street and Owen Street. And a nice little place to work. My dad actually worked here, and he says it was good times. And it had lots of traditional working values. Of course foundries are very dirty places and the ones that do survive today and the people that worked in them will tell you that. Well let's have a look at what it looks like today. Well today it's nice to know that they've actually kept the name of some sorts Chatwin's Wharf which of course named after 
the Chatwin foundry itself. Now you can see that tree on the left, that tree was actually there when the foundry was here. Nowadays, if you look, you've got bungalows and houses and so on. And it's been turned into, I think, part social housing and part private, I think. But it's good to know there is little remnants, it's not been forgotten. You can still see the, the sign there, Chatwin's Wharf. Now, one particular workplace, foundry, one of the most iconic foundries in Tipton was Buller's. Now, Buller's wasn't a massive place. It just had a bit of a reputation for probably pumping out the most smoke out of any foundry in the town. And it's situated just off Factory Road. Now, there was a saying what went round Tipton. I don't know whether people use it anymore. But if you smoked heavy, you would be classed a smoking like bullish chimney. Now let's have a look at what it looks like today. Well, this is where Buller's once was. It is sort of a workplace now. I do believe it was groundwork. And that was the name to it. But I think it's changed hands a few times since. But this was where Buller's was. And it was just off the canal as well. So you noticed a lot of foundries were situated near a brook or a canal. Who knows why that was. Now just inside Factory Road you have KVE. It's not KVE anymore. It's MRJ Willis Fish Limited. But this was the old KVE factory. And you can actually see it on there. Now KVE made good scratchings. If you like scratchings. Some people says the one weren't very nice, but I didn't mind them. I ate them regular and they're still out today. Now on the border between Tipton and Cowsley you got KV pork scratchings. Now that was where it moved from in Factory Road to Sedgley Road West and this is where it is today. I find it a bit strange to be honest because it's just a house, isn't it? You know, maybe it was cheaper to run, running it from here. I'm not quite sure why that is. As you can see, the sign. Tasty KV pork scratchings this way. Oh, making me feel hungry. Now, also in Sedgley Road West, we have Newey's. Now, Newey's was situated just behind that building and my mum actually worked there for quite a few years and it was a very good place to work for by all accounts I know a few people what worked there and the building that you can see just there I do believe is a listed building so let's have a look at what it looks like today well today the building's still there new is which was at the back a pin making sensational factory which I thought was a very nice place to work for when I was told by my mom and other people are sadly gone it doesn't exist anymore but this building is still here as a remnant to those wonderful working times now on the corner of Hearst Lane and Sedgley Road West sits the Doughty Arms. Now the Doughty Arms originally wasn't always here, it was the Five Ways Inn, but that was taken down and it was replaced by the Doughty Arms. Now a lot of people remember the Doughty Arms as being one of these pubs what was a little bit rough at times and then over time it became you know so bad that they had to do something. But let's have a look at what it looks like today. Well, here on the Five Ways, I'm pleased to announce that it's no longer the Doughty Arms, it's of course Mad O'Rourke's world famous Pie Factory. Yes, the Pie Factory, known worldwide for having the cow pie, 
with the pastry horns in if you like and it does make you feel hungry when you stand here because you can actually smell the cooking as I'm standing here you can really smell the ovens on and it smells delicious now I've been in here quite a few times it's a very traditional pub and it does have live music as well and it does have a lot of traditional ways still and people flock here from all around and sometimes all over the world to see this famous landmark and I'm glad that it survived and I'm glad that it's a famous landmark as it is because here on the five ways it really is a standout piece isn't it And we now come to Neptune Forge. Now, Neptune Forge was quite a large place. It really did have a lot of heavy industry within its grounds. It made chains and it also made anchors. And it was one of those places that everybody will remember at some point. It is largely documented online and other places as a well-remembered spot for Tipton's industry. But let's have a look at what it looks like today. Well, today it's Neptune Health Park, the local doctors for Tipton people. And this is where it stood. It looks a lot different now though, it really does. It looks very changed, if you like. But memories remain, don't they, for places like Neptune Forge. And we now come to the Bean Foundry, a very large building and very dominant in around the Tipton area. It did sort of have a lot of land to it and they actually used to make cars originally and you can actually see some of those cars at the Black Country Living Museum and they also made ammunition for when the world war was on and they actually the germans actually tried to bomb the bean at one point and they hit the star hotel instead and because of obviously the amount of ammunition that was being made there but let's have a look at what it looks like today well it looks very different doesn't it you know that landscape that dominating foundry which once stood right by the canal from Tipton and on the way to Cosley again by a canal and you can still see those remnants on the side of the canal where the bean once stood um, a very traditional place you know it had good workers my dad worked here my granddad worked here and I know a lot of people from the past have worked here but it will always be remembered and you know, and if you look now, there's houses everywhere, as there always is today, isn't there? But, yeah, this is where the bean once stood. And I've now made it to the Angle Ring on Bloomfield Road. Now, the Angle Ring, known very prominently all around the world for being a traditional heavy steel bending company. They are a good company and they have very traditional values of making steel and bending it and there's not many of those around at the moment so let's have a look at what it looks like today I'm pleased to say that the angle ring is still here it's still in all its glory, it hasn't changed much at all and it's still going strong by all accounts and it's been here quite a long time as you can see established in Tipton in 1951 so yeah I'm pleased that it's still here obviously it's a workplace it gives someone a job which is fantastic so good on your angle ring
Now for those of you who are big soap fans and you like your TV, you'll know EastEnders on British soap set in London and you'll know the actor Steve McFadden. Now Steve McFadden of course plays Phil Mitchell, he plays the hard man. Well he actually came here a few years ago to the Angle Ring for a part for his boat I do believe if I'm right on that and he was a very nice person, very nice guy very uh, you know down to earth, nothing like his character uh, I actually met him myself back in I believe it was 96, 97 he was in Shipley's Amusements in Dudley Town Centre and very very nice person, very down to earth and he came here to the Angle Ring and yeah it's hard to believe isn't it Phil Mitchell came to Tipton now right opposite the Angle Ring stood the Broy Mill a factory, a large factory and mostly steel and that type of industry and if you look round you know you can actually see the shape of it where you see that now um, I mean if you look at it here I mean it looks pretty you know a big industrial site because that's what it was and again we're going to look to see what it looks like today well today it looks very different doesn't it not the same at all all housing and apartments have uh, been placed here and there was an actual plaque here up until recently and they never put it back to say that the Broy Mill was here and that blue plaque uh, sadly gone it's been stored somewhere I believe and the next place we come to is the Roman Mosaic a beautiful building tile making some beautiful tiles very unusual the way the tile designs are made and put together and a very place where you would think you know you always need tiles for your bathroom or your kitchen and you would think a place like this would last forever but let's have a look at it what it looks like today well sadly there's nothing left of what was the Roman mosaic in Bloomfield it's a real shame because I remember coming here and they did struggle for a while and they had new owners and they saved them and for some reason it shut again and never reopened and it's been like this ever since it's just derelict now and flat piles of rubble and never to be seen again it's, it's a real shame because a place like that you always need don't you with tiles and we're now back in Bradley's Lane we've been here before of course when we covered the Talbot but there's one building that I really would like to see if it's still here so let's go and have a look two doors down from the former Talbot pub we come to the Great Western pub a very traditional looking pub very nicely built put together well traditional signage and it's a pub that for me I don't remember I know a lot of people remember it now it's actually got its name from the Great Western Railway which was situated just here on the Tipton and Cowsley border but let's have a look at what it looks like today well today it's just a yard sadly it's nothing more than a yard actually that building that you can see just say what says Metal Mickey's that is actually the same building from when the pub was next to it and well it's just a yard as I say today but it's sad isn't it you know because one minute it was here and the next minute it was gone and nobody knows why really I don't know if anybody did know why it was knocked down and we now see the ironworks of William Milligan and as you can see plenty of smoke bellowing out damaging the church and if you look at the smoke and you know you can see the way it's educating over it over the church itself you think well what's happened to that church these days 
Well, I'm pleased to say that the church still survives today and it was originally St Martin's before that moved to Lower Church Lane which isn't a church anymore but this changed to St John's and that smaller building on the bottom was added because of so much damage to the original one but the actual tower itself still exists as you can see and by all accounts this is Tipton's oldest structure St John's Church in Upper Church Lane and the next place we come to is Charles Laith and Co Limited in Upper Church Lane or otherwise known as Moat Foundry and later it had another name and people still call it that today known as the Clay Co and they made fire grates and I'm going to show you a little remnant later as well but let's have a look at what it looks like today well up until a few years ago it was known as the Jenna Steels it's now known as Jersey Tex Limited and it's quite changed a little bit it's not the same building of course but it's always been a sort of a workplace area and quite a large area as well I'm not sure quite what they do here anymore at Jersey Tex but still a workplace nonetheless there's one of these actually in Toll End as well just down the road Summer Hill Social Club otherwise known to locals as the Clayco and this was actually the canteen to the work the Clayco when it was known by that name and nowadays it's open to the public I think you have to be a member to come in here now but a, a very nice sort of place for a drink very local very black country if you like but this was as I mentioned the canteen to the clay camp in St John's Road and we made it to Lower Church Lane and Jevons's. Now Jevons's was known for laying pipes, going out different places, laying pipes. It was also known as, well, a factory to do other things later in its life. And um, yeah, it was a good place to work for by all accounts. A lot of people said they enjoyed the fresh air, of course, being out. But let's have a look what it looks like today. Well, today, housing, and what a surprise, has replaced the once wonderful Jevonses, which stood right here. And it's so sad to see, isn't it, you know, when I work like that, especially if you work there yourself. But of course, if you work there a long time, you probably wouldn't take much notice because you probably saw enough of it over the years. But if you didn't, very traditional place, now gone from the Tipton landscape and we have now come to Horsley Bridge and Thomas Piggott otherwise known as Horsley Piggott or if you're from this area Osley Piggott and it was a massive place um, the work itself it really was it was just it went on it was one of the biggest works around here if not the biggest it was massive and known for making bridges and if you got a job there you would find you know it would be very hard going very hard work and but a very proper hard working place let's have a look at what it looks like today here on the way to Horsley Piggott or Osley Piggott well this is what replaced it and you know it's sad really really here it really is it's um, you know, it, you know, saying the place covered a, a big area, it went all the way to like Great Bridge towards Dudley Port. It was, you know, a giant of a place, and just to see it replaced with houses is is sad, really. But times change, don't they? And it's just the way of the world, of course. I don't know what actually happened to that. It just closed. Maybe it did had it today. Who knows? But yeah, good memories remain, I suppose. And that's it for today on CJC Adventures. Hope you've enjoyed the history of Little Burton Estate and of course the industry of Tipton. So much industry to cover isn't there with Tipton. 
there isn't much left now but back in the day of course it was literally rife there were factories and foundries side by side probably some say more than houses and if you enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe click on the subscribe icon and the bell and you'll be notified when each video is uploaded and please share thank you very much for watching i really do appreciate it and until next time look after yourselves and each other and goodbye for now